The Homeless Man I was on the subway going to work. I was tired. I'm the kind of guy who has a difficult time operating on less than eight hours of sleep. Last night I got six. I'm cranky when I'm tired. The subway was particularly crowded that morning. I literally had no elbow room. The guy sitting next to me reeked of body odor. The woman on the other side of me stank of cat piss and the guy who had been standing in front of me with his ass in my face for the past ten minutes turned around and spilled his coffee all over my briefcase. Definitely not the ideal start to my day. When we reached my stop, I stood within the mass of bodies and we all flowed toward the doors like a stream of salmon. I noticed the homeless man sitting on the subway. Perhaps it wasn't fair of me to make such an assumption of the man, but he sure looked homeless to me. He was old and frail. His parched, leathery skin was blotched with month-old dirt. He wore a moth-eaten, crusty winter cap and a white t-shirt that had become a palette for a medley of food stains. He wore fingerless gloves that exposed the filth under his fingernails. But somehow he seemed happy. His toothless grin exuded genuine friendliness. And then there was the tattered cardboard sign he held. Scrawled across it in black magic marker, it said, You will make someone laugh today. That made me smile. He recognized my joy and made sure I noticed his tip jar by shaking it. I was happy to give him a $5 bill and I made my way to work. I work in an office doing a job that would put you to sleep if I started to go into detail. It was midday when Gloria, the gal across the aisle from me, gave me a command. Hey Roger, tell me a joke. I spun around in my chair and looked at her. She had a long face and seemed empty. Recently she had been complaining about problems with her husband at home. I knew it had been a rough time for her. The first joke that came to my head was a good one, but it was on the filthy side. I thought Gloria could use some good clean fun, so I gave her something short and sweet. What do you call a fly with no wings? She shrugged. A walk. She smiled and then let out a loud cackle. Thanks Roger, I needed that. She spun around to her desk with a newfound sense of energy. It felt good that I could make her laugh. That's when it dawned on me. I made somebody laugh today. The next day I got on the subway after having gotten a full eight hours of sleep. The subway wasn't as busy so I had room to stretch out and the only aroma in the air was the subtle mingling of perfume and cologne. As I exited the subway, I spotted the homeless man again. He looked exactly the same with one exception. He had a new message on his cardboard sign. It read, You will find money today. I gave him a smile and said, If I do, I'll split it with you. As I approached my office building, I saw a small piece of paper blowing in the wind. It swirled to a stop next to my shoe. That's when I realized it was a $20 bill. I quickly snatched it up and my thoughts immediately drifted back to the homeless man. I've heard of coincidences before, but this was really something. That night I worked late, so the subway was practically empty. But I did spot the homeless man. I walked up to him as the subway approached my stop and held up the $20 bill I found earlier. I told you I'd split it with you, but I think you deserve the whole thing. I pushed the $20 bill into his tip jar. I began to exit the subway, but the homeless man reached out and tugged on my jacket. As I turned to see what he wanted, he lifted up his cardboard sign. 
It said, Tonight, you will meet the girl of your dreams. That message brought a beaming smile out of me. (laughs) I hope you're right, buddy. That night, I sat down in my easy chair and cracked open a beer. I got ready to relax and watch a basketball game I had been looking forward to seeing all day. It was my alma mater, Middle Tennessee State University. Then I thought of the homeless man and his sign. How was I going to meet the girl of my dreams if I was sitting all alone at home? So I decided to go down to the local sports bar and watch the game there. The Blue Raiders started off hot and jumped out to a 10-3 lead. When they hit a three-pointer, I stood up and cheered. And so did a woman a few tables down from me. This was unusual because nobody out of Tennessee knows who the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders are, and I was a long way from Tennessee. A few minutes later, a waitress brought a beer to me and pointed out the fellow Blue Raiders fan. She said it was from her. The gal joined me at my table and introduced herself as Tina, a fellow Middle Tennessee State alum. She was just a few years younger than me, super nice, and stunningly beautiful. Oh, and did I mention single? We made a date for the weekend. This may very well be the girl of my... of my dreams. The girl of my dreams! just like the homeless man had predicted. I wasn't sure what to think. I mean, the first two forecasts could have been pure coincidence, but there's no way in the world this third one was. This had to be real. This homeless man had to genuinely be able to tell the future. The next day I got to the subway early and rushed up and down the aisles in each car searching for him. I had to find him. I had to talk to him and know how he had this amazing ability and more importantly find out what was going to happen to me next. When I finally found him, he didn't seem like his happy self. He was saddened by something. His shoulders were slumped and his head was drooped forward. When I tapped him on the shoulder, he looked up at me with tear-filled eyes. I was about to ask him what was wrong, but that answer became clear as he slowly held up the cardboard sign which read, This is the last day of your life. The Ghost Train Halloween season is my favorite time of year because I love haunted attractions. Every single year there is a plethora of haunts to choose from. I've traveled across the country looking for unique attractions that will deliver some serious thrills and scares. Haunted houses, haunted corn mazes, haunted caverns, haunted caves, haunted ships, haunted trails, haunted hotels, haunted factories, haunted boat rides, haunted prisons, haunted amusement parks. I've done just about all of them. I was at work chatting with a coworker about how many places I've been to and how I've been having a difficult time finding something new and exciting to quench my Halloween thirst. A guy who sits behind us named Craig had apparently been eavesdropping on our conversation and slowly poked his head over the cubicle wall and yelled out, Boo! Craig was a goofball guy who was always joking around and could never take anything serious. But he was good for a laugh on a boring day. Have either of you girls been to the ghost train? I nodded. I've done haunted trains before, they're typically not very scary. I didn't say haunted train, I said the ghost train. Where is it? About an hour from here. I shook my head. If there was a haunted train ride just an hour away, I would have heard about it. 
Craig walked around the cubicle and pulled a chair up close to us and sat down. This is kind of like a black market haunted attraction. They don't advertise and not many people know about it. A friend of mine told me about it a couple years ago. I went there and it blew my mind. I wasn't sure if I believed Craig or not. This jokester might have been pulling my leg, but I was intrigued. Okay, how do I find this mysterious ghost train? I'd have to take you there. You'd never find it on your own. And there are some stipulations you'd have to agree with. Like, you have to be blindfolded until you are actually on the train. They don't like any first-timers knowing about the location. I knew Silly Craig well enough to know he wasn't planning on taking me there to assault me or anything like that. He was a bonehead, but he was harmless. So I agreed. I just had to see this secretive Halloween haunt. Okay, how about tonight? He shook his head. That's another thing. The ghost train only rides on October 30th. October 30th was on Friday, just two days away, and I was going to be counting the seconds. The clandestine aspect surrounding this haunt was captivating. Once Friday rolled around, Craig kept teasing me, saying things like, Are you sure you want to do this? You may be sorry. You're going to be freaked out. You may never recover from this. There was no way this ghost train was going to live up to the hype he had built up. Once work finally ended, I sprinted to his car. He purposely took his time and strolled slowly through the parking lot, milking my anticipation as much as possible. When I finally got into his car, I told him that if the ghost train freaked me out as much as he was leading on, I'd take him out to dinner afterward. Awesome, but you may regret that. I'm hungry. We were on the road for about 45 minutes when Craig slowed and pulled into the pothole-filled parking lot of an old abandoned bank with broken windows. We're about to reach the town limits. I have to blindfold you now. Seriously? I thought he may be joking about the blindfolding business, but he was dead serious. Sorry, but it's necessary. Just trust me. I agreed, and he blindfolded me, rather snugly, I might add. After another 10 or 15 minutes, I could feel his car slow to a stop, and he shut the engine off. Okay, keep your blindfold on. No peeking, agreed? Yes, yes, I agree. Now take me to the ghost train. I could hear Craig get out of the car and shut his door behind him. A few seconds later, my door opened and he ushered me out of his vehicle. Hold on to my hand and I'll lead you into the ghost train. Walk carefully and stay close to me. I could feel gravel crunching underneath my feet before I heard Craig say, Take a step up. I followed his instructions and could hear a subtle metallic clang as my foot came to rest on a step. I could hear him as he climbed up onto the step next to me and directed me up a few more steps before he finally stopped. I'm going to leave you now. You have to do this alone. After you hear me shut the door behind you, take off your blindfold. When the train conductor asks you where you're going, tell him you want to go round trip. I could hear Craig's footsteps grow distant as he walked away and then heard the loud shriek of a heavy, uncooperative door sliding shut. I reached around, untied my blindfold, and pulled it off. It took a moment for my eyes to adjust, but when they did, I could see that I was standing in between cars of a train. I slid one of the adjoining doors open and stepped into a passenger car. I was expecting the passenger car to be covered with cobwebs and Halloween decorations, but that was not the case at all. It was beautiful. There was approximately ten rows of varnished wooden seats. The entire train was lit by candle, but the effect was more cozy than creepy. There was only one other person in the car. It was a woman who was sitting near the front of the car. 
She was dressed in old-style clothing and was wearing a bonnet. When she turned to look at me, I was expecting her to be decked out in skull makeup and to lash out and make me jump. But she was just an ordinary woman who gave me a polite smile and then turned back around. I took a seat in the middle of the car near one of the windows. I tried to look out of the window to see if I could spot Craig, but the windows all had wooden blinds pulled so nobody could see outside. Once I was settled in, the train's engines rattled to life, and an elongated squealing screech preceded the rhythmic clunk of the iron wheels and the shake of the passenger car as the train began to move. Once the train began to pick up some speed, the wooden shutters sprang open, allowing me to see out onto the cold, moonlit October night. We weren't more than a few minutes into the train ride when the train conductor emerged from the front of the train. He was the first creepy aspect of the ghost train. He was dressed in an old-fashioned train conductor's outfit. His manicured white beard was almost the same shade as his unusually pale skin. He turned and let out a hacking cough before approaching me and speaking in a cracked old man voice. Where to, ma'am? Round trip, please. The weathered conductor stared at me for a moment before giving me a quick wink. He then moved along and exited the passenger car. So I guess the ghost train was free for me. Sweet. I sat back and stared out the window, anxious for the ghostly shenanigans to begin. I could feel my skin break out in goosebumps as the train slowed and we approached a cemetery. It was huge and looked authentic. There were drifts of fog snaking their way around various large, intricate, vintage tombstones. I was expecting an army of zombies to push themselves up from underground and rush the train. But that didn't happen. Nothing happened. We just traveled by a creepy cemetery. After that, we passed a rather ominous-looking forest with oodles of thick-trunked trees. They had monstrous branches that appeared to be arms reaching out for the train. I thought maybe one of the trees would spring to life and attack the train. But they didn't. We just rode by. Then we came upon an old train station. It was raggedy and worn. It appeared that it could topple over at any moment. It was covered in thick cobwebs and had an old western feel to it. I thought maybe we'd get ambushed by ghostly cowboys. Perhaps they'd even jump onto the train and give us all a good fright. That didn't happen either. And a few minutes later, I heard the old conductor's voice ring out. Round trips complete. That was it? That was the ghost train that was supposed to freak me out? I mean, it was kind of cool, but they could have done so much more with it. The train screeched to a halt and I got up. I took one more look around at the impressive old-style passenger cab before exiting. As I stepped from the train, Craig was waiting for me. He was leaning against his car with his arms folded. He was holding a mischievous grin as though he had just won something. I stepped up to him and shrugged. That was it? His smile grew larger as he nodded. That was it. Before I could say anything further, he reached out, put each of his hands on my upper arms, and spun me around. I was staring at an ancient, steam-powered locomotive. It was a massive beast and caked with a thick layer of rust. The windows were shattered and moonlight exposed the cobweb-ridden dusty interior. And the gargantuan wheels of the train were rusted to the track. This thing probably hadn't been in motion for over a century. That's when it hit me. This wasn't a gimmick. This wasn't some playful, haunted Halloween attraction. This was a ghost train. The woman on the train, the old conductor, the train itself, they were all honest-to-goodness ghosts. This was all real. I turned back around and looked at Craig. My mouth was agape. My eyes were as wide as saucers. 
I'm certain I was nearly as pale as the ghost of the train conductor. I was searching for words to say, but was legitimately speechless. Craig suddenly became very serious. I can see you enjoyed it. He began to sneer. But there's one huge problem. Craig tilted his head down slightly and raised his eyes up, staring at me in a sinister fashion. I could feel shivers running down my spine. Something about his menacing eyes made me think he was about to confess to being a ghost and that he was going to kill me because once you ride the ghost train, you have to become a ghost yourself. His evil glare quickly transformed into a grin. I can't decide if I want steak or seafood for dinner. I let out a massive breath of relief and playfully punched Craig in the arm. Then I treated him to the best steak and seafood restaurant I knew of.